All right, we have three solid lines that we trade off of, okay? In fact, let's go over to crude first, year so we can uh, go over the, the solid lines to look for. The three solid lines, uh, jump on uh, crude real quick, I'm sorry. Jump on crude. I labeled them here for you on crude oil. If you take a look at it, let's wait till Gerald gets over and get rolling. Gerald, switch over to crude. One sec, guys and gals. Okay, let's look at crude oil. We have a high value area that's in red, red solid line. We have a control point that's in blue, and we have a low value area that's in a green solid. This control point just moved up a second ago, but it called the low to the tick right down here. It was right at this low where I circled this morning, and uh, it will move as it finds the most volume that's traded in that particular market that you're trading. So that blue line is the most volume that's traded in any instrument that you trade, any futures, stocks, or Forex. So I have stock traders that trade this. I have um, currency traders, I'm sorry. And then I have um, also futures traders inside and outside this room that trade off this blue line. This blue line is very important because it creates major support and resistance because it is the most volume that's traded in that instrument in that day. So at the time, it was at this exact low before it moved up a second ago. It was right there. So what you want to do with this control point, since the most volume is traded, it was sitting right at that level, it will move and try to find value during the day, then it will lock itself in. You can trade off of it. If the trend filter is up, our trend filter is this magenta MA. If it's angled up, we're going to look for a simple rotation outside of the control point, a retest within two, maximum three ticks, and then we're going to look for positive market buildup. So the market broke right through the control point. It busted right through it. It retested right exactly on it for the most volume is traded. And then it gave us a nice ABC wall. And then it went all the way to high value area, which is your natural target. Now, if you look at the, the overall control, then what it's supposed to do is if you're trending up, a great way to trade it is break retest of it. Now, if you look at the chart next to it, uh, we have J-Signal. J-Signal, I like to use the white chart for its developing profile because if you break outside of the red, the market is in a strong phase and an uptrend. You can look for the first retracement. Our blue Fibonacci dots fired exactly on the control point, which gave us confluence. And then you look at positive market delta over here, gave us the low. Now, check out positive market delta of 626. Anything over 200 is a major buy imbalance, and check that out, 626 right at the control point retest. So my point is, we'll use these three levels to find trades. We did it yesterday, we did it the day before, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If you look at all these solid lines, they've called the major inflection points in Golden Crude and many other markets. So we use those to trade off of with positive or negative market delta over here. Now, once it retested the control point and stopped right on it, we did have positive market delta, and that gave us the overall trade. Now, go over to gold right now. Gold is just cranking. 75% uh, off here on gold, guys. 75% off on gold pre-market. Check out gold. Gerald, switch over to gold. Switch over to gold, buddy. Okay, gold. Look at this trade. Look at the break retest on the control point. Stop right at 38. I got two times support. The same thing happened on crude. Check out my price profile, the dotted lines that are over top my solid lines. I went over this yesterday. That's called confluence or a what? That is called a confluence level or a stack level, a brick wall. Now check that out. That buy was at 38. 38 was a buy all the way over 48. That's a $1,000 trade that just happened on pre-market on gold. I said yesterday, watch out for gold on a pre-market trade because unemployment claims come out at 8.30. Sure enough, that's a $1,000 trade with a maximum risk of 130 bucks. So you had a $130 risk on that trade setup that just happened, and your maximum risk was 130 bucks, got up to 49. So the same thing, the trend was up. Look at my trend filters angled up, magenta MA. That's the first thing you find. Smaller MA is crossed, giving you stronger trend, and you get a break, retest of the control. This is exactly the same thing that happened on crude if I put them beside each other. Joe, go back over to crude. If I go over to crude, crude oil, the control point at the time was exactly right here before it moved, right here at the low. So if you look and you notice, 
both control has caused us to trade this big move up in gold just happened big move up in gold just happened this morning thousand dollar trade potential risk of 130 bucks and this trade in crude oil 25 all the way to 85 25 to 85 on crude and it was all generated by the most volume that's traded in the market this line will move okay these solid lines will move and then they will lock themselves in they'll move and they will stop like this and just stop right here this creates a next support level for the control point so that's going to be a tradable level it's a first test trade so it will move and, and they will stop moving once they stop moving let's say the control point moved up right here and stop right there if this price came down on crude and tested that level and you get a positive market delta you can trade off of it for a big explosion to the upside so it moves these solid lines move with volume that's why they're so important it's been working for 31 years it continues to call the inflection points market profile okay so we use these three solid lines control point high value low value to buy and sell off of because they create major support and resistance there's another thousand dollar trade potential that just happened on gold and you do this in all markets right across the board it doesn't matter what market you trade it's the same exact setup if the trend is up we're going to look for a buy retest rotation to the upside if trends down we're going to look for a sell retest rotation to the downside called continuation patterns okay if the trend is flat that magenta if it's flat like it was a couple days ago if it's flat stay on crude Gerald if it's flat as a pancake then we're just going to sell the high and buy the low like this all right that's all we're going to do look out call the low to the tick almost the high to the tick this is 30 just around 30 to 85 almost a $500 range to the upside $500 to the downside on crude why look at the magenta ma magenta ma was flat as a pancake okay we don't use moving averages for 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 buy signals or sell signals because they're worthless those are for novice traders who use different time frames to trade off moving averages no one knows if it's going to stop at the 200 or 50 i don't care if you use a five minute chart daily chart 60 minute chart 120 and you wait till they all can flu it doesn't matter it's a lagging indicator you've got to trade the internals of the market if you're going to succeed these are electronically traded markets now the floor traders do not have the benefit like they did in the 1990s in the early 2000s all the volume is electronic now so this leaves the footprint this is our footprint print chart market profile leaves a footprint a footprint are these three levels you need to trade off those three levels to be successful with my methodology if the market's flat the market can only do two things it can trend or it can chop okay if you log in and the magenta MA flies a pancake buy the low sell the high if you're trending up break retest don't make any difficult than that more difficult okay these levels will do this algorithm will do the hard work for you you're just gonna be disciplined on the approach